Good morning, good morning, good morning. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the King of glory. Won't you pray? with me this morning as we invoke God's spirit. Wonderful and glorious God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for inviting us to worship for this moment in time. We pray, God, that you would have your way during this worship experience. That, God, you do what you want to do, how you want to do it, through whom you want to do it. God, we pray that you inhabit the praises of your people. That our worship would be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils. God, have your way with each and every one of us. Prepare, oh God, our hearts to hear you speaking. Forgive us, oh God, of our sins. And let us, oh God, be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, to what your Spirit is doing in us, saying to us, instructing us. We thank you, oh God, for this invitation. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this moment. God, this is our prayer. We offer it in the name of Jesus. Um, amen. Amen. We invite you, we join you, and we invite you to join us for our opening selection. Our opening selection this morning will be Hosanna, led for, excuse me, led by our very own um, Deacon Deetra McLaughlin. Amen. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. We are so very glad that you are joining with us this morning. So good morning again and welcome to worship. Welcome to worship with the Trinity Presbyterian Church. We are now in the season where we are worshiping hybridly, but this is our Sunday to be virtual only. And, and so we just want to welcome you to our first time visitors. We are so very glad that you are worshiping with us. We pray that something is said, something is done to make you feel welcome, to let you know that you are in the presence of the Lord. For our family and our friends, our regulars as it it were. We thank God for you. We thank God for your presence. You could have worshiped anywhere, but you chose to be with us. And for that, we are grateful. 
We pray that if you are if you are worshiping here online on on Facebook Live, that you would like and or love our post, and um, that you would write a comment to let us know that you were here. And we, if you would be so kind, we invite you to share this broadcast on your Facebook page, either by starting a watch party or by sharing it simply um, sharing the link so that others may experience the uh, ministry of Trinity as well, because this is indeed the day that the Lord has made. This Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen. If you are watching this later on our YouTube broadcast, we also invite you to share, to like this um, post, and to subscribe to our YouTube page. Our announcements this morning are as follows. They're a little bit lengthy, so um, make sure that you listen up. If you need to get paper, pen, and write it down, you can. Um, but they are also they have also been sent to you in your weekly emails so that you may hear and so that you may share and see them right there all listed out for you. Amen. Our evening prayer is generally held on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. via the conference call line. And that number is 202-926-1179. The access code is 963-308-POUND. Our morning devotional prayer is held and will be held every day this week, Holy Week, Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 o'clock a.m. That is also via our conference call line. And that number again is 202-926-1179. The access code is 963-308-POUND. Our Bible study is held on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom and the conference call line, which again is um, 902-926-1179, access code 963-308-POUND. Um, please just keep a, um, your ear posted. I can't remember if we were canceling um, Bible study this week or not, but I will let you know um, soon. I will let you know soon, but that's generally how we connect on Wednesdays. Amen. We have our midweek prayer, our midday prayer on Thursdays at seven, excuse me, at two o'clock PM via the conference call line. Again, 202-926-1179 and the access code is 963-308. Our youth ministry will not be held this week, I believe, um, but typically it is held on Fridays at 5.30 PM via Zoom. I invite you to check out and to subscribe to our YouTube page. And that link is in your weekly emails, but certainly you're invited because the more we get um, a larger subscription, the more things we can do and um, the more we can access the platform for our benefit. Amen. Our 2022 per capita is $40 per member. And so if you've not done that, we've just entered the second quarter. We invite you to do that um, as soon as you are able. And if you are able to give an extra 40 for someone else, then you are certainly well able to do that. That offsets the bill that the church has to pay because no matter whether we receive it from you or not, the church is responsible for taking care of our, our per capita per member. Amen. Next Sunday, we will be celebrate, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. We will be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord in person and online. So hybridly, um, we will be back to hybrid worship on every first and third Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. during the month of April. We will, at the end of the month, reassess, see where we are, see what our numbers look like. And um, we will determine whether or not we will continue on first and third or if we will be able to win if and when we we will be able to go back in um, fully on every Sunday. Next Sunday, April the 17th, 2022, which is also Easter Sunday, there will be 25 beautiful single stem lily plants decorating our sanctuary. They will be free to anyone who chooses to take one in the congregation following the morning worship. Don't take it before service is over, but following morning worship, they will be free for you to take home with you and to enjoy. You are invited um, to join us on the first Sunday in May as we celebrate um, the Pastor's My um, fifth anniversary. And our special guest is going to be Reverend Dr. David K. Brawley of the St. Paul Baptist Church, Community Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York. And so you are invited to worship with us on the first Sunday in May. 
If you need assistance or know of someone who needs assistance in regard to purchasing food, gas, transportation, we invite you to contact the church office on Wednesdays between 9 a.m. and 12 noon at 973-744-3396 or to reach out to Deacon Laverne Parish. Certainly, we have some resources that are available and we don't want anybody in our midst, anybody connected to us, close to us in the community around us to suffer needlessly when we have the resources to help to alleviate that at least in part and so if you know of someone who is in need please do not um, allow your pride to get in the way just reach out and ask um, it is not something that is publicized it is not something that is published um, but we certainly want to be of assistance and to be a blessing to you amen the Lord blessed us this past Thursday to host a food distribution at Trinity for um, Trinity and the community. And we are very grateful. It was very successful by all accounts. And so we are very glad. Our next food distribution, because we're trying to do this regularly, our next food distribution will be held on Thursday, April the 21st, 2022 at 12 noon from 12 to 2 o'clock p.m. And so I know that it's in the middle of your work, of many of your work days. Um, there will be prepackaged food, um, foods available to members of, uh, to our members and our community members. Please drop by and pick up a bag if you, um, or you know of someone who needs something and, or someone who could benefit from it. If you're not able to be there, um, we will need to get a little bit of information from you. I spoke incorrectly last week and I'll correct that in just a second, but we can set it aside for you and make sure that you are able to get it. The organization providing the food will need to collect some of your demographic information. They will need information that includes your house, your name, your household size, um, and the age ranges, as well as the range of your annual income. They just need to collect that for their, um, for their demographic report to be able to know, okay, we have this many people in this type of category breakdown, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but no matter where you are on that spectrum, no one is turned away. And so it is there, it is available for you. So I invite you to come and join with us. The Sean Carter Foundation is accepting applications for the 2000 for its 2022 scholarship. Applications are due April the 30th, 2022, and that can be found at www.seancartersf.com. OK, and you um, click on the you follow the links there for the scholarship fund. That link has also been sent to you in your weekly emails. It's also in our heading for this week for our liturgy and our announcement. So you should be able to find that right there. Um, just click on it and it should take you right there to it. Um, the, people are looking for licensed social workers and licensed counselors for K through 12 students for a job for job opportunities in New Jersey. This is coming to you. This opportunity is made available through New Jersey through, um, um, excuse me, made available through Effect School Solutions. If you are interested, or if you know of someone who is interested, who is a licensed social worker or a licensed counselor who is interested in working with, um, in, in school systems in grades K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade, please reach out to Miss Anisi Bryant and she will connect you with that information. Um, contact me and I can connect you with Miss Anisi and that's how we will work that out. But certainly if you know of someone, pass that information along. This is certainly an opportunity. We want to be a blessing to you. We want to be a blessing to the community in any way we know how. So when we get scholarship information, when we get job postings or information, when we get um, information where there are distributions of food and help for our community, for the public, I will pass it along and share it with you. You are invited to join um, to join me virtually this Thursday, which will be Maundy Thursday, um, as I worship together with First Baptist Church Milford, Connecticut at 7 o'clock p.m. That is going to be via their Facebook and their YouTube pages. I have included the links and how you can get connected. That is a virtual service. Um, I've included that in your weekly emails. But First Baptist Church um, Milford, Connecticut, Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. is where I will be, and I invite you to worship with me as we worship for Maundy Thursday. I will be the featured preacher that for that service. 
You are also invited to join me on Friday, virtually or in person at the St. Paul Community Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, um, for their seven last words um, service. And that is going to be Friday at, begins at 12 noon. Um, they have a pre-service. It starts at 11 and you are invited. You can join us virtually. You can um, via their website, their YouTube, no, their website, their Facebook, or you can be there with us in person. And that email, excuse me, not the email, the, the um, address is in your weekly emails. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's there. And so you're well able to join with us. I pray that you would make note of these announcements and that you govern yourselves accordingly. It is now time for us to pass the peace of Christ. For those of you who are on Facebook, I invite you to like or love our post and to put in the comments as we share the peace of Christ. For those of you who are on our conference call line, I am going to unmute you shortly that you may share in the peace of Christ with one another. Participants are unmuted. Good morning. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. All participants are muted. Amen. Amen. It is now time for us to hear our praise reports and our prayer requests. And since it is, um, I am going to, again, unmute you shortly on our um, conference call lines that you may share your praises and your prayer requests. And for those of you who are on Facebook Live, you may um, type in your praises and your prayer requests in the chat, and we will get to them at the appropriate time. Amen. Let us hear our praise reports and our prayer requests. All participants are unmuted. I'd like to ask prayers for Cornell and Sabina Moss, Delores Lo Moore, um, mm -hmm. Maria Rivera, Shani Harris. Next. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. I'd like prayers for Sydney, Sam, Lori, and I'd like traveling mercy for myself. Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please continue to pray for the Page family. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. I have to pray for little James Williams as he's suffering with an unknown illness and prayers for his mother who is extremely anxious at this time and prayers also for my sister Muriel and her husband Reggie. Next. Lord, Lord hear, our Lord, hear our, our prayers. We uh, praise God and thank you Lord for miraculous healing, total restoration of health, provision and favor for my Wife Delzell Moss for my sister in law Kathleen Moss, for Bertie Walker, Aunt Helen, John Rimbert, and for all of Trinity's sick and shut in. I ask you, Lord, to touch them and heal those among us with life threatening illnesses in Jesus' name. And we also pray for God's comfort for those who are depressed, mourning the loss of loved ones, and mourning the loss of good health. Well, we ask you to heal their broken heartedness and clothe them in their right minds. And I always ask for you, 
your guide is for the protection and covering for my daughter, Rosamond. And I ask for blessings, healing, and salvation. And God save for all my nieces and nephews and family in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord, for long life, strength, and, and wisdom. Amen. Next. Lord, hear our Lord, prayers. Hear our prayers. Lord, hear our Lord, prayers. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. I'm sorry. To mute conference participants, press one. To all participants are unmuted. Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. I only got a portion of it. Oh, prayers for yeah. Gary Kunzel. Prayers for Gary Kunzel family. He just passed away. Hmm. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. All participants are muted. We're asking for prayers, for prayers of well-being for those who have no one to pray for them, comfort for those in mourning, sustenance for the homeless, the unemployed, the underemployed, protection and appropriateness for police, military, especially women within the ranks, firefighters, EMTs, endurance for medical staff, um, safe vaccines and endurance for morticians, protection for all children, success for those in educational in the educational system, restoration for families where possible, deliverance from domestic violence, ho um, human trafficking and addictions we're thanking god the father for another week we're asking for prayers for cousin joyce bailey and her family asking for prayers for healing for loretta tuvera nancy torres um elizabeth tyler amen praising god and good morning uh, mr green we thank god for you and praising god for you as I am back. I apologize. I, we got disconnected somehow. And so here we are yet again. Amen. Amen. So, um, yes, let's see. Where are we now? Um, praying God's continued prayers for the Bell family, Jeanette Davis, Mary Douglas, Irvin Bell, Cassandra and Leon Davis, Rhonda Davis and family, Rachel Lugo and family, Faye Frierson, Layetta and Shani, um, Allison and Gabrielle, Patricia Nicholson, Mita Barrow, Anita Bush, Aaron F., Babies, Jeremiah, Harley, Sierra and Pastor Wright and family. Praising God for Lance as he visits Montego Bay, Jamaica for two weeks for the first time in all hospitality from uh, and and for the first time in all hospitality from his friend Bedell's family. We are truly grateful. Amen. Um, congratulations and prayers for strength to our brother who is currently running a half marathon this morning. This is from um, um, Miss Simone Bailey Campbell, thanking God for his continued guidance and our Trinity family. Happy belated birthday to Mrs. Moss. Elder, um, that would be Elder Delzel Moss. Amen. Asking for prayers for Parrish, Rose, Maranon, and Parikh families. We are um, also asking special prayers for um, the Allen family and Roger and Eva Bell as they prepare to relocate south. We're asking for prayers for our spiritual leaders and mental health professionals. Prayers for our church, Trinity, and our pastor, Reverend Dr. Anita Wright. Prayers for the Dickerson family as the process of this as they process the sudden death of their son. We're asking for prayers for the Halley family and Miss Branch. They both uh, made their transition and we praise God for them, but we're certainly praying for their families as well. Mr. Page had a birthday on Friday, and for that, we are praising God as well. 
And we're lifting up prayers for um, our very own Miss Sharon Kane and her family um, in the passing of her father last week. I believe it was it was early last week, but last week. And so we certainly want to lift up prayers for them. Amen. Let us pray together, shall we? One, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot our whole prayer list. My apologies. Okay, um, for our prayer list today, we are praying for Deacons Doreen Butler, Hazel Clark, Irita Gollop, Laverne Parrish, Bernice Paschal, Peggy Place, for Verdi Walker, for Elders Joanne Burrell, Mary Holland, Delzel Moss, for members June Jennings, Hyacinth Lofman, Helen Mack, Joan Rembert, Lois Williams, Hazel Bray, Hazel Hassenbay, for the people in Ukraine, for healing from COVID-19 and all its variants, and for all of those who generally need an intervention, intervening hand from God. God, let us pray. God, we thank you and we praise you for the blessings of this day. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are and for who you have been to us and for us. We pray now, God, that you would continue to bless us and keep us, that God, you would continue to have your way, that God, you would continue to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, through whom, O oh God, you want to do it. We pray now, Lord, that God, you would just continue to speak to us, that God, you would hear all of our prayers, that you would hear prayers, O oh God, for our family family and our friends, oh God, that you would hear our prayers for healing and for protection, that God, you would hear our prayers for, um, for just being who we are and that you would hear our prayers, oh God, for your guidance and for your direction, oh God, for your for the forgiveness of our sins, oh God. Lord, we lift up all of our petitions to you, oh God, praying, oh God, for our, our, um, our uh, military family members, our military members, and those who are close and their families and those who are close to us in our church, oh God. We're asking for prayers for Deacon Howard Gardner, oh God, for and for the healing uh, and for healing for Joanne Ware. We just pray, God, that you would just continue to bless us and that you would continue to hear our prayers and continue, oh God, to show yourself mighty. On this Palm Sunday, oh God, we know that sometimes you enter in and we expect you to do one thing, but often, oh God, you do something completely contrary to what we were expecting. And God, we're okay with it. But God, we pray that you would give us understanding, that you would give us peace, oh God, that God, you would show yourself mighty. You would show yourself strong. For God, you are indeed the Lord strong and mighty. God, you are the captain of our battleship. God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So God, we pray that you would just have your way. We pray, oh God, that you would just bless us and keep us, oh God. We pray, oh God, for Mr. Curtis Dyer oh God, who is Grayson's papa. We pray, oh God, that you would just bless him as he celebrated his birthday on Friday, thanking you for another year, oh God. Lord, we thank you for <coughs> excuse me, spring that is springing, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for flowers that are budding. We thank you, oh God, for temperatures that are rising. And God, we thank you that even in the midst of it all, no matter what it is, highs or lows or ins or outs, cold or warm, you are still God. So God, have your way. God, do what it is that you want to do. God, we simply thank you and thank you for hearing our prayers. Now, God, we pray that if, if there is anything that I have failed to ask, that God, you would not be um, um, slow in failing to grant it for us, that God, the things that we have not asked out loud, that God, you would even grant the petitions of our heart that we're holding close to us. And so, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you in advance for all that we will see manifest. Thank you in advance, oh God, for what the healing that will take place. And thank you, oh God, even right now for what you are doing. For God, while we're trying to figure it out, we know that you have already worked it out. And so, God, give us the will. Give us the way to be able to wait on you until we see the manifestation of the salvation of the Lord. God, we bless you now. This is our prayer offered with thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Beloved of God, it is giving time. And the Bible reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Today, I invite you, I encourage you to give cheerfully, to give abundantly, to give openly to God that which a portion of that which God has already entrusted to you. If you're going to give today and you want to give, there are several ways that you may give. You may give by writing a check to the Trinity Presbyterian Church, putting it in the mail and mailing it to 5 High Street, Montclair, New Jersey, 07042. You may give via the Givelify app at givelify.com. If you need that link, that link is in the um in the comment section. It is in the heading for today's um, broadcast, but it's also in your weekly emails. You can just click on it and go to Givelify and it'll take you straight to Trinity's page. If you would like to you and you're local and you choose to give this way, you may give by dropping off your gift at Trinity's um, at Trinity and the man's and the, putting it in the mail slot there. If you choose to give that way, we just simply ask that you would secure it in a secured envelope with your name and giving number if that is applicable to you on the front. And so we encourage you to give that way. And then finally, you may give through your bill pay um, and through your um, banking institutions bill pay feature. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we're going to pray together as we receive our gifts. Wonderful and glorious God. Thank you. Thank you, O God, because every good and perfect gift comes from you. Thank you, O God, because it is you, O Lord, who gives us the power to get to wealth. And so God, we pray that today we would honor you. We would honor you by giving back a portion to you of that which you have given to us. God, with a open heart and open hands, have your way in each of our lives and in each of us. Help us to be good stewards over that which you have entrusted to us. Lord, let us spend it appropriately to do your will and your work. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved of God, we are going to prepare ourselves to receive the word of God. Today, we're going to prepare to receive the word of God by first receiving a scripture reading from our very own Miss Sinai um, um, Burrell. Yes, who is going to read for us this morning. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, Lord, say the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a coat outside in the street tied, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing in tying that coat? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus they, and threw their coat, cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of the Father David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out into the Bethany at 12. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sinai. We appreciate you. Sinai read our scripture. She read um, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. So thank you, Sinai, for joining us. Um, what you guys don't know is that um, I asked her at the very last minute. You're like the last minute, like this morning, last minute. It's like, oh, I had this wonderful idea. Sinai, would you read the scripture for me? Sure, I will. And so we thank you. We thank you very much for um, just being available and for being willing to take part. Um, and so we thank God for each of you. Now we're going to hear our sermonic selection. Our sermonic selection today will be again brought to us by our soloist, Deacon Deidre McLaughlin, who's going to be sharing with us Ride on King Jesus. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a beautiful rendition. I appreciate and I applaud you for leading us into the place of worship and for sharing with us. Again, I spoke with and I sent out the clarion call and Deacon McLaughlin said, sure, I'll do it. And she says, I'm going to try to be very ambitious and do right on King Jesus. And boy, did you do it. Thank you so much for sharing and for consenting and not just saying yes to me, but to both you, Deacon McLaughlin, to you, Sinai, thank you for giving God your yes this morning as we enter and as we share in worship on this Palm Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't you pray with me today? Lord God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you that you are omnipresent, that you are all places at all times, that God, even in this on this day, when we are physically apart, that God, you are with each of us wherever we are. I pray, God, that you would continue to manifest yourself um, amongst each listener, that, God, you would anoint me afresh, that I may speak your words clearly, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you would go before me and open the eyes of your people to see you, open the ears of your people to hear you, open the hearts of your people to feel and to experience you, O oh God. Now, God, I pray that you would consecrate me now for your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, O God, and my will be lost in thine. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This, O God, is my prayer offered with thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved of God, I, I implore you to turn your attention to Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, and looking at the last verse, verse 6. Today, we continue and conclude, actually, our series on Psalm 23. And today, we're looking at Psalm 23, verse 6. Let us hear what the word of the Lord says. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, that's the King James Version from the NRSV, New Revised Standard Version. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Today, for as long as God allows me to stand before you, I'd like to preach to you from the subject always and forever, always and forever. When you are young, there is a phrase that seems to be a part of your lexicon that shifts its perspective as you get older. You say things like always and forever. You use this phrase when you talk about your best friend, your BF. This is my BFF, my best friend forever. And you mean it until you have an argument or until you grow up and grow apart as, as things tend to happen and you develop different interests. You say things like always and forever when you talk about your first love, I will love you always and forever. And you mean it until you break up. As a matter of fact, we use these words when we think of marriage. This was certainly a popular wedding song um, by the same title, by Heatwave, and then later remade and covered by Luther Vandross. And the lyrics say this, Always and forever, each moment with you is just like a dream to me that somehow came true. And I know tomorrow will be the same because we've got a life of love that won't ever change. And most of you can probably fill in the blank and sing the rest of it. For every day, you'll show your love in, in your own special way. And it goes on and on and on. We share vows. 
we sing the words, we dance and we sway until forever seems entirely too long. When till death do us part, seems like it is an invitation to action more than a vow, more than a lifelong commitment. And the truth is that we use the phrase forever and always, always and forever, but do we really mean it? Do we really mean forever and always, always and forever? For the last five weeks, we have been traveling through the text of Psalm 23. We have explored what it is meant, what is meant by God as our shepherd, how God cares for us by meeting our physical needs, as well as our spiritual and our emotional needs, by giving us rest and restoration, by giving us respite so that we can, God leads us into it. We have discussed God's omnipresence even in the darkest of life's situations. How God comforts us. How God is there with us, protecting us with God's rod and God's staff. Last week, we examined how God honors and vindicates us in the presence of our enemies. But that God also gives us more than we need so that we will have an overflow, an abundance, that our cup overflows so that we can be a blessing to others as well. Well, beloved of God, this week, we look at the last verse in the shepherd's psalm, Psalm 23. And as we turn our attention to this psalm, we see that the psalmist alludes to a always and forever type of commitment. In today's verse, David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Another way of thinking about it is, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me always and forever. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord always and forever. Mm-hmm. For the duration of the psalm, the psalmist has been declaring to God, has been declaring all that God will do and has done for him as his shepherd. Yet in this last verse, we hear the psalmist inferring his commitment to God. The psalmist opens the, opens the verse by saying, as his shepherd, the Lord's goodness and kindness follow him. We know that the Hebrew word for kindness or mercy is hesed. You've heard me say it before, which is God's steadfast loving kindness, God's steadfast love and God's steadfast mercy. It gives the connotation of God's faithfulness in expressing God's goodness to the psalmist. And certainly we know that to be true because we quote things like Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. Um, that, that great is thy faithfulness, O God, unto me. Uh, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Right? We talk about it. We sing about it. The Hebrew that is translated, um, the Hebrew word that is translated as follow is radaf. And right off, which means to pursue. Therefore, the psalmist is saying that as his shepherd, the Lord is pursuing him with faithful goodness and kindness always and forever. The psalmist says that no matter what, God's goodness is chasing after him. God's faithfulness is constantly being renewed. God is chasing him with blessings after blessings after blessings. This is what the Lord does as shepherd. He pursues us in order to bless us. Wow. Do you really mean to tell me that God is intent, so intent on blessing me faithfully that he, that God will chase me down in order to do it? Absolutely. That is absolutely what I am telling you. God pursues us to bless us with protection, even when we want to elude God's hedge of protection that has been put around us. 
God pursues us to bless us with provision even when we sometimes squander it unwisely because sometimes God gives us exactly what we need and we squander it doing something else. We squander sometimes our monies. We squander sometimes our energy. We squander sometimes our opportunities. We sometimes squander our intellect and our talents and our abilities, but God still dogs us, pursues us to give us exactly Exactly what we need. God pursues us to bless us with God's presence. Even when we want to run away from God, God is still there. And as our shepherd, God will leave the masses to come after us, to restore us to safety to the flock. That's how much God loves us. Beloved of God, we know it because Jesus taught us about it in the New Testament when he talked about it in Luke chapter 15, not often known as the lost and found chapter. And Jesus talks about how the um, the shepherd will leave the 99 sheep to go find the one who has strayed. Yes, beloved of God, God pursues us. In fact, that's what God did for us when God sent God's son, Jesus, from his throne in heaven to come to earth to redeem humanity from sin. God understood that humanity was in danger of straying away from safety. And therefore, Jesus came as our good shepherd to bring us back to the flock. He pursued us where we were. Yet the psalmist says something else. The psalmist says that I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. There are a couple of things to see in this simple statement. First of all, it is important for us to note the language. The psalmist used the phrase the house of the Lord. Often the house of the Lord referred to the temple or to the tabernacle. However, note the timeline in this text. If the author is David, and many most believe that it is, then the temple has not yet been built. As a matter of fact, what we know is the temple was not built until after David died, and it was built by his son, King Solomon. Therefore, for David to say that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, he clearly was not talking about the temple, not the way that we understand it. So what was David talking about? The phrase, the house of the Lord, also referred to the presence of God. It referred to the place where God's presence abode, where God's presence abide, um, would, would abide. And, and so, therefore, when he says, I will dwell in the house of God, I want to dwell, I want to abide, I want to live in the place where God is. I want to be where God is. I want to be where he's working. I want to be where God is manifesting God's self. I want to be. I don't want to be any place where God is not. Ergo, when David says he will dwell in the house of the Lord, he is saying that he will abide in God's presence always and forever. That he will abide in God's presence for the entirety of his life. This happens in two ways. It happens because God is pursuing the psalmist. And by inference, God is pursuing us too. God pursues us to bless us with God's faithful, loving kindness and goodness daily. Because God's mercies are new every morning and God's compassions do not fail. God pursues us to keep us near God so that we do not stray. God purposely creates an atmosphere to keep us close by God's side, even in the darkest moment and in the darkest valley. God pursues us so that when we wander off, God's rod and God's staff comfort us and they call us back to God. God's Holy Spirit checks us so that we can't get too far out of God's reach because nothing is too hard for God. Nowhere is too far for God. Yet the second part of David's statement is a commitment. It is a commitment, a covenant. It is a stated intention to pursue the presence of God, God in um, his entire life. Notice, we begin by God pursuing us. 
Now, David is saying, and I will pursue God. We've had um, uh, uh, a gospel artist singing, I'm chasing after you. For that's, uh, you know, because that's what I want to do, right? We, we hear it and we talk about it and we sing it. We talk about pursuing the presence of God, trying to lean in and get into the presence of God, pressing into the presence of God because we want to be where God is. This is what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, not only is God pursuing me, but I'm pursuing God too. David is determined not to ever be away from God. David states it here and in this psalm in psalm 23 but david also repeats it in psalm 27 when he says it explicitly when he says one thing have i desired of the lord and that will i seek after to dwell in the house of the lord and to inquire in his temple in other words david says i want to dwell in the presence of god and i want to always be able to have an audience with god so that i know that i have god's ear and god listens to me and even beloved of god when David found himself in the middle of some mess, when he found himself having dealt with being caught in adultery with Bathsheba and being caught and then having her husband killed so that he wouldn't be caught and then being called out by the prophet Nathan. David, when he wrote Psalm 51 in his moment, in his hour of repentance because he had messed up, his prayer was he fervently prays that God, please do not cast me away from your presence, O Lord. Beloved of God, David's, and David was intent about pursuing the presence of God. Therefore, my friends, my beloved friends, on this second Sunday in April, in the year of our Lord, 2022, as we declare, as we celebrate, excuse me, Palm Sunday, it is appropriate for us to echo David's decree that we will abide in God's presence always and forever. It is certain that Jesus understood that. Jesus, who left his home in heaven to pursue us with his love and his loving kindness on earth. Jesus, who lived, loved, and ministered on these terrestrial shores for 33 years. Jesus, who healed the sick, gave sight to to the blind, who delivered those who were bound. Jesus, who set the captives free. Jesus, who um, delivered those who were possessed by demons. Jesus, who restored the dead back to life. This Jesus, even Jesus, wanted to abide in God's presence. We've seen it in our prayer devotions, in our prayer devotions every week during this Lenten season, studying Jesus' prayer life. He wanted so much to be in the presence of God that he cultivated that with his prayer life. We see it as Jesus enters into Jerusalem to the cries of Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest, save us, save us now. We witness Jesus' desire to be, to abide in the presence of God as he knows what awaits for him in Jerusalem. But since Jerusalem is where God is and where God's work is being done, Jesus goes to Jerusalem, not counting it, not counting the cost of losing his life as something that he should attain. Jesus wants to be where God is. We see Jesus's desire to abide in the presence of the Lord always and forever and to make the way clear for us to abide in the presence of the Lord always and forever from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. And so beloved of God, we should lift our voice to sing with Michael Jackson that I want to be where you are. We should lift our voices to sing with heat wave and to, and to make known our desire to abide in the presence of the Lord all the day long, all my life long. We should lift our voices and sing and declare just like heat wave that we want to abide in the presence of God always and forever. Ever. We must vocalize that we want to be right there. We must name our intention to pursue God as God pursues us with God's goodness and God's mercy all the days of our life. We must say, no, better yet, we must demonstrate to God our desire to be in the presence of God always and forever. And therefore, beloved of God, I end how I 
began with the lyrics of heat wave always and forever but now beloved of God think about it in in light of our desire to be in the presence of the Lord always and forever each moment with you is like a dream to me that somehow came true and I know tomorrow will still be the same because we've got a life of love that won't ever change and every day oh God every day love me in your own special way melt all my heart away oh God with your smile smile on me Jesus with the rising of your son smile on me Lord with how you bless me every morning smile on me Lord with how you allow me to see and to meet each new day it says um take time to tell me lord take time to show me lord that you really care and we'll share tomorrow and all of my tomorrows together forever always and forever and i'll always love you always and forever there'll always be sunshine when i look at you oh god it's something that i can't explain just something about the things that you do and beloved of God I am singing to the Lord always and forever always and forever I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the day long I will abide in God's presence when things are going well but I'm going to abide in God's presence I'm gonna lean in and stick a little closer even when things are not going quite so well I'm going to abide in God's presence from the rising of the sun but even at the setting of the same I'm going to abide in God's presence when I'm in the midnight hour and everybody else is asleep and it's just me and you Jesus I'm going to abide in God's presence I'm going to abide in God's presence when I'm on the mountaintop but I'm going to also abide in God's presence when I'm on the in the valley low walking through the valley of the shadow of death I'm going to abide in God's presence when I have my health and my strength and I'm clothed in my right mind and I'm going to abide in God's presence when I'm hanging on by a thread and I'm on the edge and I feel like I'm about to lose it all I'm going to abide in my in God's presence when my coffers are full but I'm also going to abide in God's presence when the cupboards are empty and all I see is dust and hear the echo of emptiness I will abide in the presence of the Lord because God is is my shepherd and as my shepherd I shall not want as my shepherd God leads me beside still waters as my shepherd God restores my soul as my shepherd God has made a take place before me in the presence of my enemies as my shepherd God has anointed my head with oil as my shepherd I am going to abide in the presence of God because God's goodness and God's mercy pursue me. They are dogging me. They are catching me. They are covering me. They are meeting my every need. And the least I can do is to stick with God because God is sticking with me. God is pursuing me and I pursue God right back. Think about it. Before we were even known, before we were even formed in our mother's womb, God demonstrated God's love for us in this, that Christ died for us. And so because God thought about me, because God reached out to me, because God has done all this for me, always and forever. Each moment with the Lord. The old saints used to say, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Let us today and every day abide with God always and forever. That is the word of God for the people of God. My friends, I pray that if you're here today and you're listening, that there's something in you that wants to make this commitment to abide with God always and forever. Be like, God, no matter what comes, no matter what may be, I am never going to walk away from you. Oh, I know, Peter made that same declaration and he kind of fell away for a minute, but here's the thing. God still pursued him and God pursues you. 
You're saying, but Reverend, you don't know what I've done, but God pursues you. God knew you before you were even formed. But Reverend, you don't understand. Listen, regardless of what man, human humanity may do or not do, God still does. God loves you and pursues you. God loved you so much that God sent God's son for you. Jesus loved you so much that Jesus knew what was waiting in Jerusalem, but still went because it was the will and the work of God. And so beloved of God, if you're here today and you've not accepted the grace of Jesus Christ extended to us freely, I invite you to receive it today. Yeah, you can do it in several ways. You can write it in the chat. You can you can type it there. You can per, you can send me a message via email, pastor-trinitymtc at comcast.net. You may give me a direct message. You may call the church office at 973-744-3396. It does not matter how you do it. What's important is that you do it. You don't have to have all the answers. Nobody does. I don't have all the answers. But what I promise you is that we will walk together and learning to know God for ourselves. That God, I will pursue you all the days of my life because you pursued me until the moment I was able to have a right thought to say, hey, maybe I need Jesus. If you're here today and you need a church home, you're not connected to a church home and God is leading you to be connected to the Trinity Presbyterian Church family, I invite you the same way you may, you may, um. So you write it in the chat. You may shoot me an email, pastor-trinitymtc at comcast.net. You may call the church office at 973-744-3396. If you don't get an immediate answer, leave a message. And I promise you, we will get back to you. It's just that important. You can direct message me. You can reach out to one of our elders, deacons, whomsoever. If you don't know and you just know somebody that might know me, that might be connected to Trinity, reach out. Because what's important is not how you do it, but that you do it, that you find a place in the Lord here. God bless you, my sisters. God bless you, my brothers. God, children of God, I thank you for being here today on this Palm Sunday that we can shout together, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, which means save, save now. Yes, yes. God bless you all. Let us now look to the Lord and prepare our hearts to, um, to receive our benediction. Let us pray. Wonderful and glorious God, I thank you. I thank you, O oh God, for who you are and for all that you've done. I thank you, O oh God, that you pursue us, that you love us always and forever. And Lord, help us to love you right back, always and forever. Be with us now as we leave this place, but never your presence. Be with us, O oh God, this week that is um, in Christendom, a very busy week, that we may come together each morning at 7 a.m. to pray and to study your prayers, especially this week, the prayers leading to your crucifixion. But Lord, help us to be um, finish this Lenten season strong, O oh God, as we walk with you, as we continue to walk with you, as we continue to pursue you in our prayer, in our devotion, in our our gifts, in our time, talent, and treasure, in our very lives, in our very being. Now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling, who is able to present us faultless before God's throne, to the only wise God, our heavenly parent, be both glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace. I hope to see you this week, um, Monday through Thursday in the morning, um, during our prayer times, um, during our Monday Thursday service on Thursday at 7. Join me during Good Friday. Join me if you are able. I invite you as we celebrate um, the death, but also the hope of Jesus' resurrection this week. And hopefully we can see you next Sunday in person. Call, let us know you're coming so that we can make preparations for you. God bless you and have a wonderful week in the Lord.